it is time for the finals of YCS Rimini, of the first YCS of the season. My name is Oliver German. I'm your host for the weekend. It's been a long weekend indeed. Joined by Luke Withington. We made it. Yeah, we made it this far. It's only one more match. And um, it's been an amazing weekend. Like we said, 1,099 players made the trip to Rimini. Mostly Italians, more than 800 of them. While the country breakdown was slightly like a one-sided affair, the other countries weren't doing so bad going into day two. No. We saw like uh, a couple of Germans, I feel like 80 Germans out of the 120 that showed up, so uh, two quarters, uh, sorry, two yeah. thirds, made it into day two. And then the top 32 country breakdown was also somewhat diverse. Yep. And then Italy just went nuts, yep. kicking out all the other countries left and right. Yeah. And now in the finals, we are only left with two Italians. Yeah, there is one piece of result slip left that can only contain one winner <laughs> from the 1,099 people right. that we started with. We, we know for a fact that they are going to be Italian and we know for a fact that they're going to be playing Necros together with Clowns. For that reason, we have decided to bring you now the match for the third place between Giorgio Dascal with Burning Abyss and um, Alessandro Garanzini, who is playing Shadol Clowns. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah? I know you guys are not going to like it. So instead, we're going to go with the finals, <laughs> which is the Negros Mirror match, of course, with Clowns. So Andrea Zanotti on the one side of the field and then Lorenzo Santoni <laughs> on the other. No more introductions are needed. Let's take you straight to the table where these two guys are getting ready to get their game on for one last time at Rimini in the first YCS of the season. It is the, the final time to duel. Oh, we almost see some athletic training here from our volunteers in the back. But no, Ryan could contain himself this time. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So I've talked about these deck lists and clowns and, and blue monsters. Yeah, if you've been following the stream, there's a very good chance that you know the insides of this deck better than, well anybody else really if you've never played this deck you will still know how it works because you've seen it in action so many times yeah so also if if you just happen to tune in and you have missed a few games you can always check out almost everything that we have produced over the weekend on youtube apart from like the last one or two matches everything has already been uploaded to youtube on the official Yu-Gi-Oh tcg channel for europe um, there's a link to that below the twitch stream so you can always re-watch that instead of complaining about us showing the same matches on the Twitch stream in between matches. That would be really nice. Okay, we got the two hands of uh, these guys, Andrea Zanotti on the right. You can take a quick look at his hand and kicking things off is gonna be Lorenzo Santoni on the left. Yeah. So immediately you can see that he has opened up with Exa Enforcer of the Necros. That's not good. It's not what you wanna see in your opening hand. However, if he does manage to make a Valkyris play here, then he can soon tribute that off to draw a card for Valkyris. That's going to be very important here. Very important. Right. What I don't understand at the moment is that he's having Manju on the field and five more cards in hand. Um, so... Yeah, but that's, that's okay. Because Manju is uh, plus one. Yeah, but the oh, you mean after that? Yeah, I mean, he didn't search for Manju yet. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe the double unicorn is actually uh, a single one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes that happens really quickly. Um, is it correct now? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, now that works. All right, there we go. So we dropped Maxi here. Um, yeah, What's Andrea dropped Maxi, so Lorenzo is probably not going to go super nuts. Yeah. Um, he's probably going to end his turn by just tributing off his monsters here. Right. He doesn't want to... Even though it's, it would be cool to get rid of the Exa in his hand, yep. he wants to get rid of his field. <laughs> Sounds very controversial. Why would I want to get rid of my own field? Well, uh, the answer is Trishula. So he actually tributes both Exa and the Great Sorcerer, which is going to allow him to go and search for a dragon and for a spellcaster, Necros monster. That is insane. Wow, so many searches going on. And do do you think is it a good um, is it a good idea to play Droll and Lockbird in the main deck? Um, well, yeah, it's it's a good idea if you if you know that you're playing only Necros. But I think people <laughs> came in came in here not expecting just pure Necros. Yeah. So looking at both of these pl these players, both of them have been running deck lockdown. Oh uh, wow, that is that is it. 
I think the six card could be explained by Andrea going first and just passing play. Oh, he did. Yeah, because he he did have like that makes sense. such an abysmal hand, so to speak, and uh, <laughs> so he just passed play, hoping that he would see another turn. Lorenzo wow. just unleashes everything, and that is one O in the finals of YCS Rimini. The first YCS of, year, of the year, <laughs> and I've been going on about this because this means we have a new prize card. Oh yes, um, these players are competing for the first ultra rare Minerva. Speaking of Miner Minerva, a very different version of that card as a <laughs> yes. super sized card. Yeah, I was just walking through the hall and I noticed um, my friend Marcelo, who we've had on stream a couple of times over this weekend, um, was just walking along with a Minerva. And it was about ten times the size of it. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I walked over there and he was like, "Oh look, look, look! I've got I've got a Minerva." <laughs> I was like, "Oh okay, I see." <laughs> yeah, it's one of the few uh, ways how to get that card. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately you cannot play it in a duel. Yes. Even well, it well, actually, it doesn't say that you can't. Yeah, I saw that, that um, these new giant cards are only having the information that this is a limited edition in the lower left corner. Yeah. So it no longer has the restriction. You cannot play this card in a duel. Yeah, so if Marcelo Barberi is playing against you in the next local tournament or something, and he's coming with a gigantic card next to him, <laughs> here's some spoiler alert for you. He's going <laughs> to play Minerva. I wonder if he can get one of the um, sleeve creation companies to produce a sleeve for it. Yeah. <laughs> or even a top loader, maybe. <laughs> that would be uh, rather expensive. All right. So 1-0 in the finals of YC3 Mini yep. after just one, like, I don't know, two turns, basically. Yeah. Well and the first turn was just a pass. It was a, a first turn yeah, win talk, there by talk about an explosive Lorenzo. Win. So we're just seeing side decking shuffling up. Yeah, and is is there anything in the side decks? Ah, I've these, been these asking this question all weekend. <laughs> these deck lockdown, these deck lockdowns are going to cause so many issues. If, um, but basically, deck lockdown. Let's let's. I, I I roughly know what it does, but I'm gonna get the exact card text. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a prediction on this because all he's looking for for me. Um, it's a continuous spell card, and then during the second standby phase after activation, it's destroyed. Your own second standby phase after activation is destroyed, and it says neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them. Yeah, it also says monsters cannot be special summoned from the main deck. Ah, yes. This is the other thing. And basically, it's a card against gladiator beasts. Yes. But it's not too bad against certain other archetypes. No. All right. We're assuming that Lorenzo Santoni went first. This time that would make right uh, would make sense according to the count of cards. Um, he starts with a Manju of the th uh, 10,000 hands. He's got yep. 9,000 more than the others. Yeah. That's a lot of hands. Yeah. And... Um, it doesn't look like he's just going to pass, and Andrea is going to throw out an OTK here. And uh, what is he going to go for here? This time he's not going to um, assemble a gigantic field, because he cannot attack, of course. Nope. Uh, this is no so now the, the tribute action that you mentioned before. Yeah, so he's probably going to either uh, make a rank 4 play, which is probably not the intention here. He's probably just going to tribute both of Valkyrus and Manju. Or, or he is going to, yeah, it's either that or make a rank 4 play. So the preparation of rights is probably going to go get uh, Clausulus, which is going to get a, um, he's going to obviously return the cycle from his graveyard, and he's going to go and get a Necros Kaleidoscope with that Clausulus, so that he can summon his Unicor and start producing some of these, um, Exceed plays. So the likelihood of him going for like a Diagosto Emerald is quite high. Mm -hmm. And Andrea Zanotti doesn't have a maxi this time around. Nope, so he can absolutely go to town. Necros town. Yeah. <laughs> this is a blue town mm -hmm. at the coast of Italy. It's blue. And here we go. Second Valkyros being added to the hand. Yep. Is this your desired opening? Uh, yeah, I think that this th this is one hundred percent the opening that you want now. 
apart from you'd really like that emerald to be a lava chain, but apart from that, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. He, okay, he detaches Manju there. That's quite strange. That's, in, in fact, really, really strange. Usually you detach the Unicor so that you can... so that you can use that Unicor again. That's really weird. Yeah, I'm not going to question him. He's in the finals of a YCS. Yeah. He's going to shuffle it back with the effect of Dagos to Emerald. Yeah. Maybe he was wanting to keep that so that he can use the Necros of Unicor as fodder for Valkyrus. Um, like when it gets tributed using the Valkyrus' effect. And then he's got another Valkyrus in hand to use the other effect to defend. Maybe that's the desired uh, course of action here. Right. Let's see if we can see the new cards that Lorenzo Santoni drew into. Yeah. So he's already got like a reasonably great hand. <laughs> oh, he just drew deck lockdown. Okay. Um, so basically, it's a little bit like Vanity's Emptiness in him assembling his field, then activating that card and yeah. denying his opponent yeah. doing so the same thing. Uh, we always refer back to uh, the Dark Arm Dragon format in which you would... Um, summon all your stuff, your status dragon, etc., and then just flip up Royal Oppression and say to your opponent, no, you can't do what I just did because now there's Royal Oppression on the field. This is exactly the same kind of thing here. You produce a field which your opponent can't get out of while under this certain lock, and in this case, deck lockdown is going to be putting that pressure on. Okay, let's bring that card up for you guys. Yeah, and it actually is just a deck with lots of locks on. <laughs> yeah, very... Very good job by the artist there. <laughs> he understood what the card is supposed to look like. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, you can just look at the card and know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yep. So that's quite funny, because not many people have been playing the deck lockdown. There's been a few, but not that much. Um, so Andre here might just be thinking, oh, you stole my strategy. Yeah. And he's also not going to be happy with this. Yep. So let's have a look at his hand here. Um, Reinforcement doesn't do anything. He could... Clauseless doesn't do anything. No, no, he's... He can't... He, he can normal summon um, Damage Juggler and then Special Summon Hat Tricker and then go into um, a 101, uh, take the Valkyrus and then... Um, if he plays it. Attack. Because we've seen that a couple of times. Yeah, I'll cast, cast I'll yeah, that's fine. He, he's going with Castell instead, or he has to go with Castell instead, because mm -hmm. like many other players, he doesn't, f he didn't find the the space in his. Um oh, or he's gonna, he's, he's actually uh, put deck lockdown back. That's quite ironic, really. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, he's got rid of that deck lockdown, which opens up a world of possibilities for Andrea now. Let's see here, what can he do? So now he's going to go cycle. searching. <laughs> Not just a little. Oh. This is interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure he's able to play uh, Cycle, Pitch Shrit, Summon, Decisive Armor. Or Clauseless. Or um, yeah, maybe he's saving the Decisive Armor. And then go get Trishula. Or get Bryanak. Bryanak get Trishula. And then uh, Mirror, Banish Shrit, Summon Trishula, play Trishula's effect. <laughs> yeah, you were saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is exactly <laughs> what happens for some magical reason. <laughs> wow. That's, that's the best play. This is some back and forth right there um, with Andrea Zanotti. Wow, that's a good shot. <laughs> fighting back after that first game that was over in on the very first turn of Lorenzo Santoni. Now he can go swinging. Um, but I think th the only actual redeeming factor here is the fact that Lorenzo will be able to banish that great sorcerer if he has a Valkyrus in his hand. He does have a Valkyrus, yeah. yeah. So he's he's going to be able to banish that great sorcerer and get its effect. Yeah, there's a little bit of a spoiler right there. But but, st <laughs> but still, still, yeah, that was uh, quite impressive. And he also has uh, Necros of Decisive Armor. Now that's quite a, an important thing here because. He can just um, throw down that Necros of Decisive Armor whenever he feels like it. Right. So if his opponent thinks, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to Trish a Trish, then he can just throw down the Necros of Decisive Armor. His opponent's Trishul's effect doesn't resolve. And 
uh, this is something that I really should know. When when does the decisive armor's effect run out? Is it during his end? Is it during the end phase of that turn? Um. Uh, well, we can look that up. Yeah. So yeah, target one until the end of this turn. Until it was just okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was, but I was unsure because that had been an even more immaculate play. Yeah, because All right. then Trisha wouldn't be able to be run over that turn or the turn after. So uh, Lorenzo tries to come back with a Senju. Yeah, Goes so it's searching. The very basic necros play here to you know play kaleidoscope, send Herald of the Arclight, also bolstered by a Senju. To get surging. a unicorn. Yep. And that opens him to the rank four place. Yep. So, but still, he may be in the realms of thinking, oh, well, he's got, he must have like another mirror in hand or something. Or it's some monster that he can't use. He's probably not thinking too much about decisive armor right now. But if he had another mirror, wouldn't he have said it? Yeah, so another mirror, yeah, that, that was com complete rubbish. If he had another monster that he can't use, then yeah. that's that's more likely. Way more likely, in fact. All right. <coughs> But still, so far, he's not going for Trishula. He's instead going, well, the Senju that we mentioned, the Unicorn, and now a Valkyrus. That is also quite the field. These two are not holding back at all. Not pulling any punches. No. In a wild, wild exchange. Yeah, as a Necros mirror. Yeah, I think, so it's quite strange here. Um, you know, it is the finals. They're under quite a lot of pressure here. Both players seem to be going very aggressive, just throwing these these uh, ritual spells down here, um, and yeah. So yeah, sometimes we see that that um, the best way for them to uh, combat the feeling of being super nervous is to just like play as fast as possible, <laughs> yeah, and not think too much about what yeah. they're doing. I think particularly for Lorenzo, he's a, a massive advantage here because he can choose to play to win because he's won the first game. He can just go all out and see what happens. Now, I think we're going to end up here with Andrea with nothing left on the field. Yeah, so Gungnir is attacking close on us. Um, we're waiting for that attack to connect. Uh, Andrea does have the Necros of Decisive Armor. Yeah, so he could protect the Klaus Solas here. Yeah, if, if he wanted to. Because it would gain a thousand death. Yep. But he's not doing that here. Yeah, it's probably better to save it for Trishula. Yeah, because you're doing some damage. Yeah, so... What? what? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so Valkyrie tried to attack over the Trishula, and yeah. then he played his eyes upon. Okie dokie. That was good. That yes. was a good play. Definitely. But he still loses his Castell. Yeah, and um, Lorenzo is of course very, very much ahead. Yeah, in terms of cards Way on the ahead. field. Yeah, and Bo both uh, both players have no cards in hand, however. Yeah, Lorenzo is. I think he's done for his turn. He has zero cards in hand. Uh, he's probably going to make Rhapsody. Like that's. The no, okay, so he's not quite done yet. No, I think he's probably going to make a Rhapsody. Mm. Either, either that, or he's going to uh, make an Emerald to try and. Uh, he's already made his Emerald, hasn't he? Does, uh, he, does he play more than one? Some people play more than one. Um, Lorenzo plays more than one, yeah. He's playing two emeralds. So that would be, that would be perfect to try and draw um, a card to use with the Gungnir. Right. That would that would be really perfect. So yeah, there's the second emerald. That's also interesting. How many players are playing two copies of that card? I I I don't I don't know if um, we've got Andrea here who's playing two as well. Let's have a look. Uh, no, he's just playing one. Yeah. I, I I play two emerald in my builds because um, it was something that was popularized uh, a couple of YCSs ago. Now it's um, the the ability to target the emeralds and just keep recycling them over and over again. Yeah. Because the the only bottleneck in Necros is the ritual spells, and Unicor can turn into a ritual spell. So yeah, here we go. We see we see him do the the play. Put put the emerald back. So he's just recharging his extra deck as well yeah, as the main that's deck. Also not too bad. Endless loop between those two. Yeah. So 
so he's hoping for a Necros card here. Let's see what he drew. It's going to be really, really good if he draws a Necros card here. Ah, he drew a Manju. So, um, Andrea here is going to be able to use this Trachula to just a straight atta attack over the Gungnir. Yeah, and there's nothing stopping him now. No. Nothing's going to stop uh, him. He drew, <laughs> he drew an Exa. Oh, Andrea. That's not the Exa card is you not, need. Yeah, that is not the card you're looking for. <sighs> yeah, so he has to take the risk here to um, attack the Emerald and hope upon hope that his opponent does not have the heart of the cards. Yeah. And with an Exa in force of the Necros, this is exactly not what he wanted yeah, to draw. Yeah, that's so, so... Like the, the worst possible draw. I could have drawn any other card and it had probably been better than Exa. The yeah. the only redeeming factor here is that if he gets Trishulad, he's going to be able to revive. Okay, so he decides to tribute Trishula for Exa. <laughs> what? Is he trying to not fall victim to an opponent's Trishula? Yeah, I guess that's that's the only reason to do that. That's 100% the only reason to do that because Trishula is obviously far more powerful than Exa. Yeah. Um, I wish I could just pick up the graveyard of of Andrea right now. Because if he has mirrors in there, then this Exa going to the grave could pose a real problem for Lorenzo. Um, if the Exa goes to the grave and then Exa is banished with one of the mirrors, he can special summon uh, Shurit from the banished pile using Exa's effect, mm -hmm. go and search the Necros Cycle, play Necros Cycle, tribute the Shurit, summon the Trishula. So <laughs> that's going to be a real issue. Yeah, you, you lost me at like the third step. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I understood explosive play. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but this is That's really, really good for Lorenzo, who can yeah. now put a lot of pressure on Andrea. Andrea Zanotti really being on a clock here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's a deck lockdown That's again. And he's going to pick up his cards, I think. Uh, I think we're not quite there yet. He's on 6,200. He just checks his graveyard, but I think he's going to draw for his turn before he decides to shuffle up in frustration. <laughs> he, he, he's n there's no way that he kept in Mystical Space... Sorry, there's no way that he put in Mystical Space Typhoons. So what one card out does Andrea Zanotti have here? Um, a card like Roy Geki is going to buy him a little bit more time? Yeah, he, there's, there's no card that's going to kill that deck lockdown apart from a Mystical Space Typhoon. All right, so that's something to know. But he... But he probably didn't keep in the mystical space typhoons. But he's, you know, we're in the finals. He's probably just holding on. He wants to see what this last card is at least. Yeah. He's gonna look at it and probably enter handshake phase pretty swiftly. So, um, Lorenzo did draw into a Necros of Unico. That's damage juggler. <laughs> wow. Okay. So deck lockdown is gonna be destroyed. Um, he's gonna be able to uh, protect himself using that damage juggler. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so he buys himself another turn. Yeah, but unlikely that he's gonna spot a comeback. Still, well, no, no, no. At this point, he can because he has things have e happened. He has Exa. Exa is gonna be able to provide a, a, a perfect stream out into the into the world of s so many Necros players. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves, or I shouldn't. So there's an attack of oh hold hold up hold Ma Manchu up. connected. Um, Lorenzo has a face down vanity's emptiness. Ah, oh. that's unpleasant. Now Gungni is about to attack. Yeah, for game. There's there the damage, the damage juggler. <laughs> and he's just clowning around at this point. Yeah, but why? <laughs> 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 so, so, yeah, so here's the Mighty's Emptiness. He's going to go searching for a Bryanac and then going to use the Bryanac straight away. Bryanac's going to go for a Dance Princess. So we're going to see some Exceed play here. Yeah, that's an yeah well that so oof. that is all she wrote, unfortunately. I was still in front of a reinforcement there we of the army. Yeah, and he passes so play. Andrea draws immediately. The Abyss Dweller dis detaches, and that is it. The winner of YCS Rimini. Lorenzo Santoni, yes. <laughs> wow. 
congratulations on that victory. Yeah. First game, winning on the first turn, and then in the second game, he um, is able to um, play super off offensively. Yeah. And aggressively, just because he won that first game in yeah. such a commanding he just, fashion. He, he just thought to himself, do you know what, let's just go. There's no point yeah. of, of not just going right. at that point. There it was really high wasn't. risk involved, but high, high reward. Yeah, and exactly. With that, we know Andrea Zanotti, your champion for YCS Rimini. Yeah. Wow. Lorenzo. Uh, lo <laughs> sorry, yes, yeah, so much. So much confusion. Lorenzo. <laughs> Lorenzo, yeah, there we go. So, Good. Yeah, so we see out of the, the 1,099 people that showed up to this tournament on Friday, to all the pre-registration, all the way through Saturday, we see Necros and Clowns prevail. Yeah. Is that the best pos possible build of Necros with Clowns? Um, I'm going to have to go away and have a look at all of these builds. I think, <laughs> as I was saying right There's at the There's a lot start, of analyzing to be done. Yeah, there it definitely is. So... All, all of all, all the way through the weekend, I've been saying this was a perfect opportunity for new decks, new types of decks to come in. We've just had a Forbidden Limited list. We've just had a new set. Both of these things have been brought into play here. Both yeah. of these things have been brought into play. <laughs> yeah. We just, we just, we just got the symbol of interview. Yes, and um, <laughs> two thumbs up for that. Yeah. Right. Um, so, we want to hear it from the champion himself. Yeah. What, what he's going through right now. Um, Lorenzo Santoni is, is not a name that rings a bell, at least for me. No. So um, I didn't I didn't have him on the radar going into this tournament. I do I recognize I recognize him though. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Seeing him, yeah. so you definitely saw him before at one of the um, YCS events or something. Yeah. yeah. All right. And um, also something we point wanted to point out that I um, I think I never mentioned this on the stream. Alessandro Di Patria, who we had in our round one feature match ended up in the top eight of this event, the reigning national champion of Italy. After that first initial loss, he went 7-1 on the first day yep. and um, sneaked all the way into the top eight. Yeah. So definitely not bad. Well done to him. All right. We're going to take a very short break um, to bring in Lorenzo. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is going to be the last time I think I'm, I'm going to be on now. Oh, yes. That's another point. Yes. Um, Thank you so very much, Thank Luke, you, Ollie. for providing us with quality commentary. You guys let us know what you thought about Luke's commentary, especially all his knowledge of the various options that the Necro stack has. I think that's personally where you're shining the most. Thank you very because much. Because you can make sense of all those uh, chains of plays that you can unleash. Yeah. All right. It's certainly my, my favorite deck in a very long time. Yeah. So. <laughs> One can tell, yes. All right, with that. Thank you, Luke. Uh, very short break. We're going to be back with the champion. And then after that, of course, there's going to be the award ceremony of YCS Rimini. So don't go anywhere just yet. There's going to be more for you in store today.